your eyes to see unbridled talent emerge, to witness good becoming great, such as the case with Nolan Arenado. His numbers border on otherworldly, the home runs and RBIs befitting of not just an all-star, but an MVP. And for those who look closely, hardly is he a Coors Field creation, as 13 of his 22 bombs have been out on the road. The game is not that easy, unless you're number 28, I guess. It is a beautiful Northern California afternoon. Rockies and Giants getting ready to go. The Rockies have played so well at AT&T Park the last year and a half. 4-0 this year, looking to make it five straight at AT&T, something they have never done since they came into the league in 1993. We're set for baseball. Tim Lincecum against Charlie Blackman. Glad that you're with us in the first pitch of the ball game is down low, ball one. Charlie in the middle of the storm last night, going one for five. He now has a 10-game hitting streak. The Rockies have three players that have double-digit hitting streaks going. And this ball is turned on and hit a long way foul. The Rockies lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. DJ is in that uh, two spot. Then it's Tulowitzki, Cargo, and Arenado. They were big last night to say the least. We'll leave Rosario at 299. Then Michael McHenry, Brandon Barnes, and Chris Russin. And this is cued a little bit toward third. And the play by Matt Duffy gets Charlie Blackman. Well, Tim Lincecum has won 108 ball games in his terrific career. But of late, he has not been sharp. In fact, his spot in the rotation, Jeff Hughes, yes. may be on the line today. Well, they have a couple guys coming back. One is Matt Kane, and the other one is Jake Peavy. And the, the last five starts that you're talking about, Drew, he's 2-2 two and two with a 695 ERA and a 315 batting average against. So started out pretty well, but since then he has gone downhill. But if he does move to the, to the bullpen, that would be the third time in three years that that's happened to Lincecum. And uh, again, he started out, as you said, very strong this season. His numbers at home are good, a 2.14 ERA. But they have some guys coming back, namely Matt Cain and Peavy, who you said is who's struggling a little bit in his rehab start. So it's strange to talk about the Giants and their rotation in terms of their searching because they, they really they haven't been in that don't. position. 3-0 and on DJ. Yeah, they're, they're saying sometime midweek down in Miami, the Giants will leave after the game on Sunday, have an off day Monday, play Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in Miami. So they're, they're targeting Matt probably Wednesday, if not Wednesday, Thursday against the Marlins. 3-0 is in there, 3-1. and one. Tim will work some deep counts. He'll walk some guys. We've seen it in the past. He has the, the lowest, one of the lowest first strike percentages at just uh, below 50%. So that's why he walks some guys in that deep pants. And then those 85s, you see, those are fastballs. Yeah, he's, he's literally lost 8 to 10 miles an hour on his fastball. 3 twos fouled off. Some might be cutters, too, because he... he his fastball is his third pitch of choice. So he'll cut the fastball first, go to a splitter, his second one, and then the, the, the one he throws at 22%, that's the four-seam fastball. And then the slider curve. It used to be fastball at 94, 95, and a hard split. And a walk to LeMayhew. So with one out, DJ jogs down to first. He was held hitless yesterday, 0 for 5. Tulowitzki coming up, and here's the alignment defensively for the Giants. We talk about a guy who's made a quick recovery. Angel Pagan, they thought they'd have to put him on the DL, perhaps, and there he is in the starting lineup with that knee injury. Duffy and Crawford, Panic and Posey, and Andrew Susak, who's been good with the bat. He had a home run yesterday, getting another start behind the plate. 
Must There's have. Angel, and he's the guy. He stirs the drink here for the Giants, along with the right fielder who's not available, Hunter Pence. Those two guys, as great as Buster Posey is, they are instrumental to the success of this Giant team. Well, they set the table for Buster Posey. And for Pagan, that's why their lineup was out very late today. And I'm sure they were waiting on Pagan to see if he could go. That was the whole deal. And to give you an example, with Pagan in the lineup since the start of 2014, if you look at Bruce Bochy, they're 92 and 66, a winning percentage of 582. Without Angel Pagan, 36 and 43. Seven games below 500. That's just how important he is. It's 2 and 0 on Troy. That's the difference between Lincecum now and the Lincecum that won back to back Cy Youngs in 08 and 09. Is that that fastball? You you just don't see the same spin rotation on the curveball or the splits. Not as nasty going down because he just doesn't have the arm strength that he once had. And that misses three and zero. Oh. Home plate umpire is a is a good umpire. It's Sam Holbrook, Greg Gibson at first, Chris Siegel at second, and Marvin Hudson is at third. And the crowd already. And fire up Tim Lincecum. Well, for, for anybody, whether it's a pitcher or position player, when you know you don't have the skills that you once had, that's when you start doing things. DJ goes 3-0. and oh, And it was a called strike, so LeMahieu swipes second. So and that's him for yeah. DJ. And he's hit double figures. And we've seen more and more of this with a 3-0 steal than you ever used to see. DJ picks up the... Uh, the hitter to see what had happened. The pitch was called a strike. Wouldn't have mattered for Susak to throw him out because DJ had the base stolen. But to finish my point real quick about you know, guys don't have the same skill set. For Tim Lincecum, he's not throwing as many strikes now because he knows he has to nibble more. You know, position player, hey, I might have to start cheating on the fastball if I don't feel my hands are as quick as they, they were when I was younger. Yeah, you're, you're afraid to challenge when you're, you know, 85, 86 versus, you know, 95, 96, which he was when he came out of the University of Washington. Three and two on Troy, one out, runner in scoring position just underway. And that's rifle through the left side. DJ is going to get a green light. They're going to run on belt. Throw is on line, but not in time. And the Rockies take a 1-0 lead on the Tulowitzki base hit. 41 RBIs. What great homework by Stu Cole coming into this series. Because ball was in the glove of belt when DJ was at third. And that's Blanco, excuse me, out there. Not belt. That was last night. But what great work by Stu Cole. Yeah, because DJ wasn't hardly at third base when Blanco picked up the baseball. But they know he doesn't have a very strong arm, so go ahead and challenge it. DJ's running hard. He picks up Stu. Stu's waving him. Said, let's go. Let's get on the board first and keep that, that momentum going from last night. Cargo hits one high and deep to right field. And it is going to end in the glove of Maxwell. For a moment, I thought he was deep in Tulowitzki. And it was going to be off the wall. So the Giants finally retire Cargo after he had five hits last night. Go back to this play. Now watch when Blanco gets the ball. Where is DJ? He's still a stride, stride and a half away from third. But he cuts the bag. They know the arm strength. It takes three or four hops to get to home. And he just outruns the baseball. Nice job, Stu. Yeah, ordinarily, there's no way, Hugh, you would send a guy who, when the outfielder has the baseball, and you're, not, and even you're, you're not even a third yet. But let's not forget the stolen base on the 3 0 count to get into scoring position. Yep. Here's Nolan. And another unbelievable night for Nolan yesterday. Three run home run. Uh, against Tim Hudson gave the Rockies a 3-1 to one lead. And it turned out this was a big 
addition late in the game. That made it eight to three. Two for four and an intentional walk last night. A four RBI night for Arenado. So listen, why are you checking on me? I don't run anymore. <laughs> well, with Lincecum, you never know because he's 1-4 to 1-6 to the plate. And you don't have to have a great jump or have the running speed that you had just because of his high leg kick. Breaking ball for a strike. It's 0-2 on Nolan. The Rockies 21-8 this year when they score first. Rockies eight runs, 17 hits last night. Keep talking about how unusual that was. You can score. It's more typical to see runs produced in day games at AT&T. The wind not as pronounced, and obviously the temperature is much warmer. A lot more home runs during the day. Yep. I mean, compared to the number of games that are played during the day compared to now. Ball in the dirt. Susak is not going to get to Lewitsky. But Troy's in scoring position now. A wild pitch. Way to move up on the dirt ball. Troy, secondary lead. And the key for a secondary lead, not only your momentum going that way, but also being on the balls of your feet. Can't get caught back on your heels. This ball ripped to left. This will get another run home. It'll go to the wall. Tulowitzki will jog in. Arenado into second with a run scoring double. Make it two to nothing out of the gate, Colorado. 14-game hitting streak for Nolan, RBI number 65. He is something else. 27 of his 65 RBIs have come with two outs. Again, Tim Lincecum thinks he can throw a split finger to get the chase. No, I don't think so. Another double for Nolan, two runs on the board. Now it's just two RBIs behind Giancarlo Stanton. And obviously, if you didn't hear, Stanton's going to be out for a while. He broke his hammy bone. There's a base hit for Rosario. Pagan up with the baseball. No throw. It's 3 to nothing, Colorado. How about this start? And I guarantee you, in that Giants dugout right now, they're saying, here we go again. Dave Rigetti having to go out to the mound. They're already getting some conversation, going to get somebody loose. Well, Aline stays on the, the slider or curveball, whatever that was. It really wasn't a good pitch, and he did what you're supposed to do. Hit it back up the middle, driving in Nolan for the third run. Huey, you were addressing this a short while ago. What a uncomfortable feeling for Tim Lincecum, knowing that there's nothing in your arsenal that is right now quality enough to get big league hitters out. And for the guys stepping in the box, they feel very comfortable. They feel like whatever he wants to throw to me, I'm going to hit. And that's what he did in his last outing. That was at Dodger Stadium. He lasted just four outs. Mike McHenry takes a strike on the outside corner. And that was the shortest outing of Tim Lincecum's career. Gave up five runs on seven hits. He's not defeated the Rockies since 2012.
Two strikes on McHenry. Third time McHenry's ever faced Lincecum. He's one for two. Nick Conley getting the day off, day game after a night game. Nick had a couple more hits last night, two for five. He's hitting well above 300. The compliment they have between Nick and, and, and Michael. Been terrific. Both ways. What I mean by that is how they've handled the pitching staff and their combined offensive stats near the top of the National League in mean, virtually every offensive category of great meaning. Combined nine home runs and 39 RBIs between the two. And we're going to see early action in the giant pen. There goes the runner, and that's strike three. Rosario took off the called strike three, but the Rockies get three in the first. And it's a familiar group getting it done. Tulowitzki a ribby, Arenado a ribby, and Willeen Rosario driving in Nolan. Three nothing, Colorado. And now Colorado will work behind Chris Russett. Angel Pagan will lead things off against lefties this year. He's hitting above 380. Only reason they wanted Pagan out there, 271 overall. Southwest batting order for Bruce Bochy. Joe Panic will be in the two spot. He's had a terrific season, 316 overall. Then Matt Duffy, Buster Posey, Andrew Susack will bat fifth. Brandon Crawford has hit lefties again this year. Justin Maxwell in right field. Gregor Blanco will bat eight. Chris Russell, three and two with a five ERA. Typically doesn't walk many. He didn't have any walks in his last start. Had ten ground ball outs, one fly out against Milwaukee in the game. He kind of rebounded, got the W, because uh, the prior two starts, both at Miami and Houston, they weren't good. Nine in the third, gave up 20 hits. 13 earned runs but he got back to what he needed to do in his last start and that was command the strike zone shave the corners and try not to fall behind the hitters 0-1 oh, on Angel Pagan again did not play last night with a bruised knee he was a late scratch from the lineup and then there was discussion that they may have to DL him today they made their lineup after they ran him through some rigorous drills, and evidently he cleared all the hurdles, and here he is in the lineup. One and two. Well, if Chris can do that, that'll 
certainly help his day. One, two, two and two. Pagan just 11 for his last 57. Strike three inside corner, 11 for his last 58. And Russian strikes out Pagan to begin things for the Rockies on defense. Joe Panic will be next and hear the gloves this afternoon. Barnes, Blackman, and Cargo in the outfield. Arenado, Tulowitzki, LeMahieu, Rosario playing first, and Michael McHenry has the gear on. Joe Panic three for four yesterday. This guy just hits and hits and hits. He's had three hits, both of his last two games. Three thirty-one at AT&T Park. Isn't that something? That's a strike. He also has not base percentage at 386, which leads all National League second basemen, as well as his 470 slugging percentage and his OPS of 854. And when you think about the Giants, five games north of 500, they will tell you in the absence of Pagan a little bit, Hunter Pence most of the year, and Nori Aoki. They have leaned heavily on some young players by the name of Joe Panic and the guy in the on deck circle, Matt Duffy. They helped keep them afloat. And you're asking him to produce in the number two spot and the number three spot. And for Joe Panic, he's third in the National League and hits with 86. Yeah, you're not hitting young guys seventh no. and eighth in the lineup. They're Trying right in the heart of the lineup. Yeah. Right. And this is a team offensively on the road, they have the second best. Strike three. Chris Russell dealing. They have the second best offense in terms of runs produced on the road this year in baseball, second to Toronto. So these young guys aren't just producing it at, at a rate that's major league like. They've been a, an elite offensive team away from AT&T. At AT&T, it's a different story. That's a good pitch from Chris Russell. Going to start it at the hip of the the left-handed hitter, panic, and then cut it. And just nip the corner. Yeah, out on the road, I mean, they're different. Over five runs a game. At home, at 3.38 runs per game. And they're a game under 500 now at home after the Rockies won yesterday. They're 19 and 20 at home. That's down low. One and one on Duffy. Fifth game in the coveted three spot. Base hit to right center. For a two-out knock for Duffy. Wasn't a bad pitch, just a better piece of hitting from Matt Duffy to take it the other way. And off the end of the bat. Buster Posey, who struck out on a 3-2 changeup from Tommy Canley to allow the Rockies dug out and their faithful watching at home to breathe again. And Buster fouls it off. Well, and those back-to-back -back changeups were still being talked about today by some Giants pe people. We're talking to Mike Kruko, who did our counterpart on the on the broadcast side for the Giants, and he came in the booth and said, "Wow, how about that? The kid had." Had the guts to throw another changeup. And, and it wasn't a shape to it by Canley. Nick Hunley flashed the fingers. He wanted the changeup. And I was talking to Tommy Canley earlier. That's the pitch he wanted to throw. And he kind of smiled. It was a pitch he, he commanded better than his fastball. 3 1. Throws a changeup to Matt Duffy. And then 3 2. Changeup to Buster Posey. Huge strikeouts. Two strike count on Posey. 
And again, the, the fastball, he just couldn't come close to locating it. And if you're wondering, and it was confirmed today, why Walt didn't have Latroy Hawkins up. Latroy was down. He had pitched Tuesday and Wednesday, had warmed up Thursday, and was really sore. And he was on the disabled list with an arm situation earlier this year. So he was completely unavailable inside. The only other option, you know, Christian Friedrich was warming up. He did not want Christian, obviously, facing the right-handed hitters in the middle of their lineup. And so he had no other option. He's hoping Kane Lee could throw enough strikes because when he's in the zone, he's hard to hit. He is. He just had trouble commanding the fastball. This is line, but Tulowitzki reaches up and makes the catch, and that'll end the inning. The Rockies will take a 3-0 lead to the second at AT&T. It is a beautiful day here in San Francisco. Rockies up early, 3-0 on Tim Lincecum and the San Francisco Giants. We head to the top of the second. Rockies hope to increase that lead right now. And for Tim Lincecum, he only lasted an inning and a third against the Dodgers in his last outing, giving up five runs. I asked Troy Tulowitzki what's been going on with Lincecum. I think in his career he's had to uh, evolve a little bit, and I think now he's more um, not quite a finesse guy because he can still um, you know, throw in the 90s, but he's not that powerful guy he once was. And I, I think I respect him that much more in this staff because they always seem ways to reinvent themselves. Uh, Matt Cain, um, Linscom, PV Hudson, those guys are coming up with new pitches, new arm angles. Um, they do a good job of their, getting their guys uh, better um, with the stuff that they have at the time. Drew, Jeff, you guys were talking about the velocity decrease for Tim Lincecum. This is a situation now that he's approaching where we've seen him in the bullpen. He came out of the bullpen in September of last year. He started now 15 games this season for the Giants. But as you guys mentioned, with Matt Cain getting closer to his return, Jake Peavy still on a rehab assignment, they might have to make room for those guys in the starting rotation. And once again, Lincecum might have to reinvent himself. He has done it before. He hits the strike zone there. It's two and one. Talking about other guys who've done it, though. I mean, guys that used to throw really hard that uh, we just saw one with Miami. I'll give you an example. Guy who had a great split finger with Arizona, with Oakland, but was a hard thrower in Dan Heron. And then, you know, Heron ends up now being an effective starter, kind of like Lincecum. With a fastball, it's in the mid 80s. They have the aptitude to, to change. They're, they're just not so stubborn that they continue to try to do the same thing. But for the San Francisco Giants, how about this? 90 miles an hour. That's the lowest fastball velocity by any major league staff. Angels also on that list. The Rockies, the Rockies are, will see everybody on that list except for Toronto this year. 
The Rockies are 91-9, which is middle of the road. The, the average Major League fastball is right around 92 miles an hour. And it's gone up. It's gone up two miles an hour inside this decade. Yeah, I remember when I first started scouting after I got out of got done playing, it was 89 to 90. Depending on who, who what organization you work for, they were saying that was major league average. Susak's going to try to get the force, and he will. Chris Russin got up the line to avoid the double play. So Russin's bunt didn't go far enough, and Susak made an accurate throw. Well, this ball did not go anywhere because prior to the game, they water the heck out of home plate. In this area right out in there, it's all wet, and so that ball just dies. It's like a sand pit. With Lincecum, they're hoping to buy a few more ground balls where it would slow down so their infielders could get it. And then Brandon goes in, tried to take out the foot of Brandon Crawford. And Crawford made the throw to first, but too late. And Charlie Blackman at the plate. And just look at this area right there. And just see how much darker it is compared to everything else. Russ in at first, and that's outside. 2-0 on Charlie, who grounded the third his first time. Talking to Charlie this morning about Lincecum. He was doing his homework on Lincecum on video, as he does every day. And he said that Lincecum was the most dominant pitcher he had ever seen when he saw him pitch in the Cape Cod League. They were both there at the same time. And Charlie, when he was there, was a pitcher. People forget that. Charlie was a pitcher for a while at Georgia Tech. And he started and relieved that summer in the Cape, a place he loved. I don't know anybody who's ever played on the Cape. He didn't have a great time. But he said Lincecum would throw a mid-90s fastball and then throw that 12-6 curveball. He said it was unbelievable. He said it was the best pitcher he had ever seen. Well, and the Cape is still the premier league for guys to go to and play in summer ball. Walt Weiss played there. You know, his son Brody is also playing in the Cape this year. But it's one of those separated leagues. You get everybody from the top programs. Yeah, if you get an invitation to the Cape. You don't turn it down. You say, no, you know what? I think I might get a summer job. <laughs> no, that's your summer job. That is your summer job. 3-2. And this ball is lined to the corner. Stay fair. It is a fair ball just inside that yellow line. And a stop sign for Chris Russin at third. A double for Charlie Blackman. He's got an 11-game hitting streak. So the guys with the hitting streaks, they got it out of the way early. Best, best way to get it. Yep. You know, wait until you're fourth or fifth at bat. Hanging change up. And toughest part of these when you get them is, did I hook it too much? You're running down the line. You're just saying, please, come on, stay fair, stay fair. And that did for Charlie. One out, second and third for DJ, who walked and scored in the first. Usmero Petit, who got up in the first inning, is up and throwing again in the second. And because of the score and where it is, the Giants are already playing their infield at a halfway depth. And this is awful Lincecum. They're going to come home with it, and they're going to get an out at the plate. That's just good fortune for the Giants, not so much for Lincecum, because he is wincing right now. You couldn't hit it any harder than LeMayhew. And if it goes through, it's going to be two ribbies. Or if Chris stays, then they're not going to be able to get DJ at first. And then you would have the bases loaded. I mean, two things happened. One after it went off Lincecum, it went right to Buster Posey. And they're going to have to take him out. I mean, they were real close to doing that anyway. But because of the injury, they're going to bring in Yasmiro Petit. Yeah, and I, I, honestly, it may be a combination of events, as you alluded to. 3 nothing Rockies. Lincecum done after an inning and two-thirds.
but Petit's taken over. It was a line drive off the right elbow of Lincecum. He's going back through the middle. Buster picks it up by the bare hand, throws out Russin at home. Give much of a lane to slide into. That's he what just, I was, that's he just kind put of looking his at. Foot in front of the the plate. So Petit will face Tulowitzki with runners at first and second. Blackman at second, Lemayhew at first. Troy a run scoring sharp single left last inning. Petit in his last outing got beat up by the L.A. Angels. Excuse me, by the Dodgers. Let me correct that. Three and two thirds. He gave up five runs on eight hits, and he gave up a career high time four home runs. And he's a floater for Bruce Bochy, meaning that he'll float from the, the rotation. He has made one start. He's the long guy. He can come in at a moment's notice if something happens. They need to get somebody going quick. But for him, the season high in pitches is 81. In six innings, so he can't eat up some innings. And that's really what he's done in his career. Well, he's been so valuable. He's like a Swiss Army knife. He can do so many different things, but I mean, he's put together some extraordinary spot starts. Had the perfect game for 26 outs a couple years ago. He also had that streak where he retired 40 something guys in a row. Major League record. Yeah. Over the course of a month. That's a strike. You know, from afar, I've often wondered, especially lately with all of the injuries and the ineffectiveness at times of Tim Lincecum, why he hasn't been inserted into that rotation. You know, they're going to bring back Kane. That's an uncertain thing. He's coming off the elbow surgery to remove bone chips. Jake Peavy hasn't really been sharp in, a, in several years. But I think they like his flexibility to have him in case somebody can't last an inning or two. This is the third. Duffy will go the short way to end the inning. The Rockies threaten. Do not score in the second. Middle of two. Three nothing Colorado. Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by your hometown Toyota stores. Let's go places. By Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. We're going to have a lot of fun here in the city by the bay. That's a uh, 
like a big jet ski. Those are fun. There they are. Andrew Susak at the plate fouls off the first pitch from Chris Russin. Susak, Brandon Crawford, Justin Maxwell. The Rockies leading 3-0. Drew Goodman, Jeff Houston, Jenny Kavnar, Sunsplash Day in San Francisco. Middle game of a three-game set. Rockies game two of a ten-game road trip. And Susak lines it up the middle for a base hit. Second hit for the Gigantes, and Brandon Crawford will come up. It's an eight-game hitting streak also for Susak. Dodgers atop the division have won three straight. Giants two back, and then Arizona six back. San Diego six and a half back. The Rockies eight back in the division. Dodgers at Miami today. First shot against Kohler. It'll be very interesting to see how Miami plays here in the near term without Giancarlo Stanton. Shame for the Marlins, but also for baseball. You hate to see one of the superstars go down with an injury. Back-to-back -back year for Stanton. This time it was that handmade bone that he broke last night. Typically a four to six week recovery. But it takes much longer. I mean, that's when you can come back and start playing. But it takes you know, half a year to feel feel right again. My colleague Ryan Spielborgs went through it when he was in college. What did he say? It was six to eight months before he kind of forgot forgot about it. Yeah. Three and one on Crawford. Ground ball to first. Tag play at second. Great that throw. Play, what a terrific play. And you want to talk about a perfect throw. And that's what makes this play even better is the throw. So you come off the bag. You're two steps over. One, two, shuffle. He catches it. He knows his momentum's going to the bag. Smartly steps on the bag. In between hop, step on the bag, and then throw around the runner and give Troy enough time to apply the tag and then get out of there. We watched Willene take ground balls from the very start of spring training this year. You did it for years yeah. and years. How much would you say he's improved? Oh, I mean, it's tough to put a percentage on it, but I'll just go with night and day. Because early in spring training, we were thinking... Can, can this really happen? It, it was rough. Yes, it was rough. But to his credit, though, he has worked hard in game after game. You see improvements. That was a big improvement. He only has two errors and 27 starts at first base. And, and as you would know and as you described, that that was kind of an in-between hop. And, and he gave with it. He, he gave his glove with it to, to soften it. If you try to, in, in between hop is the hardest one for an infielder. With the short hop, you, you kind of pick it and set it in your glove. In between, you have to give with it at times to allow your hands to soften up. And he did. Two and two on Maxwell with two outs and nobody on. And that is strike three on Maxwell. Good off speed pitch. And that is the third strikeout for Chris Russ. And off we are to the third inning. The Rockies leading three zip.
Sports fans, you can join the conversation. Send us your thoughts and photos via Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Just utilize the hashtag Toyota Talk, and we'll show some of your Toyota Talk comments throughout the ball game. Cargo hit a fly ball to deep right field his first time up. Just got it off the end of the bat a little bit, or he would have been trotting around the bases. That was against Tim Lincecum. He's now facing Yusmero Petit. Petit got the final out of the second inning after that line drive by LeMahieu struck the elbow of Lincecum. Petit had been warming up twice anyhow because of the ineffectiveness of Lincecum, so it didn't take him long to get ready. Fargo 5 for 5 yesterday, his first five hit game since. Early May of last year. First five hit game for any Rocky this year. And that is pulled to Buster Posey, and we'll go to Petit one out. Sixteenth start of the year for Buster Posey at first base. A couple of DH 51 as a catcher. He's such a good athlete. He played everywhere at Florida State. He's very comfortable at first. The Coors Light Cold Hard Facts brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. Eight players with an active 10-game hitting streak in the big leagues. We were discussing this earlier. Three are Rockies, and all three have already gotten their hits out of the way today. Nolan with his RBI doubles hitting 14 straight. The Indians' Jason Kipnis has the longest hitting streak going. At 20. Two outs. Two and zero on Willene. Single and an RBI for Rosario, his 17th ribby of the year, pushed his average north of 300 again. He's got a lot of adjustments and a lot to deal with from you know, coming to spring training to now. You're not really going to be a, a catcher like you were. You're going to be asked to play different positions. Maxwell in shallow right. And a late jump, and he makes the catch. It's a 1 2 3 inning for Petit. Middle of three, Rockies with that three run first, shutting out the Giants.
bottom of the third inning against Chris Russin. Russin's allowed a pair of singles. That's it. He has struck out three. Eight, nine, and one for the Giants here in the bottom of the third. The sellout crowd, that's a given here in San Francisco. 367 straight sellouts of more than 41,000. Blanco takes strike one from Chris. 28-year-old left-hander. Blanco played center field yesterday. He's in left field this afternoon. That's a strike going to. Originally in the right field lineup. We were playing right field yesterday before they switched the lineup. So we can play all three outfield positions. Doing pretty well for him this year. 297. Heads yeah. up. Yeah, Roberto, Roberto Kelly had to move quickly. Time first base coach slid over to third after the Tim Flannery retired. Flann's doing some broadcasting now on the Giants' side. This is slowly hit to Nolan. This is a tough play, barehanded, and he's not going to be able to get Blanca. Well, uh, you guys could have even made that play as close as it was. Back-to-back -back hits, one last night and then one today for Blanca where he breaks his bat. Nolan comes charging hard, bare hands it. But Gregor with the speed coming out of the box, hitting from the left side. Enables him to get down the line. He still had to dive head first to make the play. Nolan, that was his only option. And you can see the ball rattling in his hand. He's trying to get it out on his fingers so he can make a stronger throw. And Petit does not get that bunt down. It's 0-1. Russin's going to go to second. Perfect throw. Well done by Chris Russin. And he gets the force. We've seen that twice in this game now. Once executed by the Giants, and now it's executed by Chris Russin of the Rockies. Let's check in with Jenny Kavner. Standing what by with Missy Franklin, of course, the four-time gold medalist. You're a Cal national champion now, Missy. So exciting here being honored today on Girls' Day at the ballpark. And it's so fun to see, of course, our hometown hero. But who are you cheering for? On the um, both, of course. Um, you know, live and grew up in Colorado my whole life, and the Rockies has been so good to me. So I'm literally out here for today only. And the fact that they were playing the Rockies of today of all days, I was just thrilled about it. And to be here, you know, being in the Bay Area for the past two years has been awesome. So I'm a big Giants fan as well. I love them both. Always have luck on your side. We love that about you. Looking so forward to the 2016 Rio Olympics. How's training going and what's your preparations been like? It's going great. It's going so fun. I'm back in Colorado now and I'm with family, which has been amazing. Um, really missing my team out here, but they've been so supportive and training's going really well. Working so, so hard hard and enjoying every second of it. Missy, thanks so much for taking some time out. Enjoy the wonderful day in the Bay Area. Congratulations on all the continued success. Thank you so much. All right, guys, I'll send it back to you. Jenny, thank you. Great to see Missy Franklin here with her teammates. And what a tremendous representative for, first of all, for swimming in general. But for the state of Colorado, could you have a better ambassador than Missy Franklin? No, somebody that embraces being a, a, a figure to go out there and lead and just a constant smile she has on her face. This is a little flare that's going to drop for Pagan. Now how big was that play by Russin to get the force on Blanco? Two on and one out for Joe Panic. 
Starting with that little bloop to center field, not hit hard off the bat of Chris Russell. But you also have the pitcher out at second base instead of Blanco. And that's why that play was big from uh, on the bunt to get that lead runner. Yeah, a whole different uh, guy running at second base. Joe Panic at the plate, struck out looking against Chris Russell in the first inning. And Missy Franklin, that, that bubbly, vivacious personality, it's not an act, I mean, she is yeah. really genuine. Remember a couple years ago when she threw out the first pitch at Coors Field? She saw the Matt Belisle, and she was so nervous yeah. about that. I'm like, you're nervous about that? You've swum in, in, in the Olympics, you've done all of this, and you're worried about throwing a baseball was one she, time? She went, uh, Matt went down to Regis High School and uh, worked with her. That's not handled by Rosario, and now the bases are loaded. The Rockies have been playing very good defense, and they're just dragging on Willene, but he didn't handle that one. And now Matt Duffy up with the bases loaded. And when you go this far and try to feel it in front, that would have been a ball better served to backhand. That would allow him to make the throw to second easier. Instead, it'll go down as a fielder's choice, E3. When in doubt, go backhand, right there. That's here. right. It, 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 when you're sliding that far to try to catch it off on your right foot, just backhand it, boom, an easy throw to second base. Got the aligned single to right center his first time. This could be two, and it's bobbled by Tulowitzki, and it cost the Rockies a chance to turn the double play. Now Chris Russell's doing his job. The Rockies' airtight defense in the infield has let him down here in this frame. Well, giving him actually two extra outs this inning. First with the air from Willene. And Troy be, trying to be too fast with the turn instead of catching it and then making the flip doesn't allow DJ to have the same timing or the same velocity on the throw to first. And now you have to deal with Buster Posey. You hit a screaming liner at Tulowitzki his first time. First and third, three to one ball game. There are two outs. Russell continues to be aggressive. He hits the inside corner. And I think if that's fielded cleanly, the Rockies yes. are going to turn that over. Yeah, they do because it was still close at first. They come inside again. It's one and one. Posey won for four in a walk last night. Again, struck out to end the game on a 3-2 changeup from Tommy Kainley. Don't get out of what you've been doing. You've been doing your thing. So make that pitch again. Get another ground ball, and you'll get out of the inning. Because there's an infield after you, and you don't make a play, or something happened, and you want that next one hit to you. You said, come on, let, let me do it right this time. Two and one on Posey. Cutters in. It's been the game plan in this at bat. Russell facing Buster. Posey sixth in the league with 48 ribbies.
the ball down in the dirt. That's what it looks like. Spike a curveball. That's a slider. That's three and two. And he may go right back to that same pitch. Like that one, I also like the cut fastball that he's been throwing. Pagan at third, Duffy at first. A run in here in the third for the Giants. It's three to one, Rockies. And this ball is belted to left center field and deep. Blackman is going to have to field it off the wall. It'll score two runs. Buster Posey has tied up the game. Now how large were the plays in the infield earlier in the frame. He should be already in the dugout without giving up a run. That's how large they've been. He gave him two extra outs. Suppose he wouldn't even come to the plate. He tried to... I mean, you could just see the reaction from Chris. As soon as he let go of that, it came within a foot of going out. Well, he did throw the slider again, but he was center cut. And Walt Weiss is coming out now. He might be challenging if there was fan interference with the guy reaching over the fence in right, or excuse me, in center field. Did he touch the baseball? to see if that went off his hand, but if it did, then it would be a ground rule double. It yes, did. it did. It so did. it's going to be a ground you know rule what? double. And that, and that That'll would put the runner run. at third base, the lead runner, or excuse me, the trail runner. In this case, Matt Duffy would go back to third. Because that would be fan interference. They're going to take a look. It's a good look down in the. I'll tell you what, it's a great job by, by Brian, yeah, Jones. Brian Jones. Absolutely. That's why you want to look at everything. Like us, most people are focused on, all right, ball off the wall and, and what's going on on the field. And, and not, I didn't even notice that fan initially. It's time for a Subaru review. Whether you're on the road or at the game, everybody could use a second set of eyes. I don't think there's any question no. they're going to have to send Duffy back to third, and the Rockies will continue to lead in the game. And yeah, you can hear the crowd in the, the background. Crowd. They're they groaning. I mean, this shouldn't take very long. No, not. Matt Duffy should grab his helmet and already be at the top step to go back to third. That shot, clear as day. Caught the ring finger. I'm wondering, and I'm going to ask an umpire at some point, if sometimes, and, and usually Major League Baseball has done a really good job, the, the delays have not been very protracted. But I'm wondering sometimes if they get backed up a little bit. What if there's a you know there's a review going on in the Toronto game at the same time? They have enough guys that are they're doing it in in the video room. That should point to third base. Yeah, there it is. Fan interference. Yes. He's got to go back to third base. Absolutely, it's three to two Rockies. Some fan below is saying that, you know he would have scored. That doesn't matter. It's fan interference, so it's. And if you're the Giants, you're like, boy, that's a bad break. Well, the, no, the well, baseball you know fans. What? 
Wait a second. They have put the runner back there. What was the point of looking at right. it if you don't put the runner back at third? Or maybe maybe they, they, the Giants just haven't brought him out maybe yet. Because first base yeah. umpire Greg Gibson saying something to Bruce Bochy now. He clearly pointed that the runner had to go back to third. Where, now where's... Where's Craig Gibson going? I'll go get him myself. Well, he's getting on the phone. I love the fan below us. He called the umpire a ref, so I'm questioning <laughs> his uh, deep knowledge of the sport. stands as it is are they saying that I don't I don't get that then what are you looking at what well, does it become a judgment maybe, call it must be a judgment call as to where, where the, runner is. the runner was so he was already well and around in their, second in base. their judgment he would have scored then what was the why were the they large signal pointing to third base. I think he might have been pointing to home that he, that he scored. I thought he was pointing to third too, but maybe from our angle he was pointing to home. Side corner for a strike on Susack. It's 0 and 2. One and two. Posey leading off second. It's a 3 3 game. A two run double despite the fan interference. Good drive in two. If you want to look at it objectively, it should have driven in two. And so from that standpoint. Outside two and two. And where he was on the diamond. Where he's as close as he was because he got the running start on the three two pitch and the ball hanging in the air so long. Susack with an eight game hitting streak driven to center field. Charlie going back and it'll make the catch to end the inning. So the Rockies play sloppy defense and it costs him three runs. It's now a whole new ball game. 3-3 three, three as we go to the fourth.
third of the order for the Rockies. McHenry, Barnes, and Russin against Yusmero Petit, who had a 1-2-3 third inning. He has retired all four batters he has faced thus far. He's had plenty of rest since working long relief on Sunday against the Dodgers, and that also was working behind Tim Lincecum when Lincecum was removed after an inning in the third. Today, Lincecum goes just an inning in two-thirds. McHenry 0 for 11 on the homestand. Struck out looking in the first. The Rockies had that great beginning. Three runs off Lincecum in the first. Now they have to get the offense kick-started again. An opportunity in the second also. You and I were talking in between breaks after that first inning, saying, or second inning, saying, man, it's kind of too bad that Lincecum was hit. And they were more than likely would have taken him out because of ineffectiveness, but taking him out and replacing him with Petit, I think that's a, a better choice for the Giants. The Rockies were just teeing off on Lincecum. Empire Sam Oldbrook said no ball outside. I always appreciated that as a hitter. So let me know, let the dugouts know. rolled foul. So we have something for Major League Baseball on that replay. The replay uh, official determined that the spectator did make contact with the baseball. That's pretty clear. But he ruled that both runs would score. And the other thing they check on that it would not have been a home run had it not been interfered with. And that was pretty obvious also. The other thing they can do is they could have awarded third base if they felt like Posey would have reached third if not for fan interference. So the movement of the runner is completely controlled by the discretion of the, umpire. the umpires in the review booth, review room in New York. And honestly, you can't argue with it. They got it right. That ball's lined down the right field line toward the corner. Maxwell is going to have to play it off a of ricochet, and McHenry will get the second with a leadoff double. Michael shoots one to right field. For his fifth double this season. Up and away from him. Takes it that way. And then Jason Maxwell has to chase the ball down after it hit the corner of the brick out in right field. And you hit in the eighth spot in the lineup at times in your big league career. Lead off double. You have the pitcher hitting behind you. It's early in the game. Obviously, the pitcher is going to hit regardless next. Normally, this is a moving situation. Is it still a still, moving situation? I, to, to me, it is because if you get him at third, you still have the, the squeeze bunt in play. So, yeah, I'm still thinking to hit the ball the other way, at minimum, have him at third base. One but you and also, one on Barnes. You also don't want to expand the strike zone too much because it, they're kind of trying to pitch around you at the same time. So if you take the walk, then it, then it helps Chris to lay down a bunt, and then you have second and third. 
So that's why hitting eighth is so hard because all these thoughts are going through your mind prior to going into the box. And that was a swing that he was trying to hit the ball to the right side. Pick play, and McHenry just got the hand back in. Very well designed and executed. All about timing, isn't it? Yeah, because how far Brandon Crawford started behind Michael. Sometimes you see the shortstop get too close to the base runner before they flash the glove. Barnes playing the weighted game with Petit okay. finally calls for time. Smart. Monkeys with their victory last night, 16 and 18 on the road. Seventeen and twenty-two at home. Surprisingly. Rockies over five hundred during day games, sixteen and thirteen. Susak and Petit want to get on the same page. Who wants tacos? When the Rockies score seven or more, go to participating Colorado Taco Bell locations the next day. Do it between four and six to get your Rockies taco special. The Rockies have also won all four here at AT&T Park. Coming into the game, they've outscored the Giants 18-9. to nine. Rockies have played their best baseball really the last couple of years against the Giants. Giants world champs last year. The Rockies won the season series. This year, they're seven and three against San Francisco. Two two. Henry a lead double. 3-3 three, three game, top of four. Hits are even at five. Rockies have committed an error. Good job yeah. staying off that. Barnes putting together a good at bat. Russin on deck. We'll go ahead and win the at bat. I think he eliminate everything inside after just looking at the four strike zone. Trying to pitch him away. Ball four, great at bat. And now they're two on, nobody out. Rustin will try to move him along. Well, we were talking about how well the Rockies have played against the Giants, and in particular at AT&T Park. And to Walt Weiss, probably not a surprise. I really enjoy coming here and playing. I love the competition. Um, these guys, you know, three-time world champions. I think I think it, the atmosphere, it's it's probably the closest thing as far as regular season game to a postseason atmosphere when you come into this park um, and play these guys. And we, we knew better than the than we were about to close to the finish line last night. 
Well, the Rockies just took the lead on a slug bunt by Chris Russin. And that almost was a disaster because if Posey catches it in the air, is that Posey who almost I had think a chance? It was panic. Well, it was almost, panic yeah. who almost caught it in the air. You're talking about, let's see where the runners well, are. It probably is going to be a double play at the very least. you got the shortstop lead. going over here, the second baseman going over there on this play. So it's a wheel play. You pull it back. You slash. Goes by Posey. A panic. Had his feet come out from underneath him. They slide out off his glove. It's a base hit RBI. I mean, that's all on Chris because you, you're taught as a, a guy that's at the box. You see that shortstop in, this, in the second baseman leaving their position, pull it back, and all you have to do is hit the ball down on the ground. Great execution. He gets his first RBI since 2013. First and third, nobody out still, and Blackman's at the plate. He had a double off the right field wall his last time up. A chance for the Rockies to have a big inning. Barnes at third base. Russin at first. Well, what Walt said is true. I mean, we yes. feel it as broadcasters. You played here. When you come to this ballpark, this 41 plus thousand, it's a sellout every night. Savvy baseball crowd. The Giants have had, you know, unbelievable success the last five years. It, it is a wonderful atmosphere, and the players feel it. More you important, more, more important than broadcasters, more important even than a manager. The players feel it. Yeah, you, you, you feel it, and so when you go out onto the field, there's a heightened awareness of what's happening, the pitches, the, the situation of the game. I mean, it, it's fun because if you know, we're sitting here on game number 74, and that's kind of where you're, you're almost halfway through the season. Days can t start to drag. One game can lead into the next, but when, it, when you're here, you don't feel that. You, this is just like today's the day. This ball to left field, it's going to be deep enough. Barnes tags, and the throw from Blanco cut off by Duffy. And a nice piece of hitting behind in the count by Charlie Blackman to make it 5-3 to three for Charlie, his 32nd RBI of the year. That is a great illustration this inning of executing offensively. You had the Russ and Slug bunt, and then on a 1-2 pitch, Charlie... Let the ball get deep and drove it to the outfield. And, and I'll take you even one further back, though. Brandon Barnes working out the walk. You're right. He was behind in the count. And you set it up earlier. You said, listen, you're going to try to get him to. This ball's hit a long way to right. Maxwell in triples alley. He was shaded there. Makes the catch. And you said, you know, they're going to try to pitch around him. And if you're Barnes, you can't expand. And he didn't, and there were a couple borderline pitches, and it was a great walk from Barnes. Two outs, two Lewitsky will hit. If you don't already receive Hot Rocks emails, you're missing out on the best ticket deals around. The only way to receive the emails is to became a, become a Rockies registered user at Rockies.com. 13 runs in a game and a half for the Rockies offense. He's starting to swing it big time at home. Back-to-back 10-run -back games earlier in the week. But you also answered some of the runs that the Giants scored in the bottom half of the third. They scored three. They thought they had the momentum. No, you take it right back away from them, put it back in your dugout. Want to know on Troy, an RBI single in the first. Grounded into a fourth play in the second. Ball and a strike. Tulo's now reached to 26 consecutive games. His career long is 27. The longest major league active streak is now Troy's. Prior to that was Joey Votto, and it was snapped last night, as you see on the graphic. Ball outside, two and one.
keep trying to go to that outside corner. Sam Holbrook's not, uh, not playing along, and, and rightfully so. Those aren't strikes. No, he's, he's officiated those pitches perfectly. <laughs> They're off the plate, three and one. Cargo hoping for an opportunity. Chris Russin remains at first base. down the left field line. Blanco hoping for a play will have him in foul ground. Can be in it. But the Rockies get two. Michael McHenry got it started with a double. And the Rockies have a 5-3 lead middle of four. is brought to you by the Ford Mustang head turning and heart pounding Ford go further by Southwest Airlines book your low fare now at southwest.com and by CenturyLink your link to what's next what a gorgeous shot of AT&T Park Willie McCovey's statue and appropriately named McCovey Cove out there in right field Chris Russell with a 5-3 lead as the Giants in the fourth inning will send Brandon Crawford, Justin Maxwell, and Gregor Blanco to the plate. 6-7-8 and eight in their lineup. Giants have lost eight of their last 11 to the Rockies here at AT&T. They've also lost 11 out of their last 14 at home. Giant pitching staff has given up 21 runs on 35 hits over the last uh -oh, 23 in. Just got to get down. It'll go off the wall. Cargo has a shot at second, and he's cut off by DJ. So it's a lead double for Crawford. 17th double this season for Brandon. And what he's done the last two years left on left after how poor he was against left-handed pitching two years ago is remarkable. Yeah, he was hitting 352 against left-handed pitching coming into the game. That was eighth best mark in the National League. New Rockets won off the wall in right field. He hit lefties last year. Two years ago, he couldn't, he couldn't could, sniff. Could, yeah, he couldn't sniff first base against a lefty. Off speed pitch and Maxwell's out front. By the way, Tulowitzki's leading all hitters 
when facing left-handed pitching at 436. This, for me, Huey, is a real key at bat in the middle portion of this game because if he can strike out Maxwell, he strikes out a fair amount, and he's been struggling. He's 0-2 right now. You have Blanco behind him, 0-2, and then you have the pitcher spot with Petit next. You can find your way out of this without any damage, potentially. Well, they may go to their bullpen. Gene McChee's now getting up and throwing. They may go to their bench, I should say. 0-2. But even then, they don't have... They only have four guys on their bench, so if they do that, they're going to the bench early. That cuts down the options later on in the game. And, and they'd have to go to either Casey McGee or Joaquin Arias. They're not going to go left on left, you'd assume, with, with Brandon Belt or Ishikawa. They're no, going to hold gonna those guys to later on. They anyway. would have started Belt. That's right. Two strikes on Maxwell. Struck him out his first time. Noted earlier in the season, the oddity, Justin Maxwell playing for the team that his last employer defeated in the World Series. He's, he's a member of the Royals. Did he go? Nope. One and two. But that's the, the spot that you want to go if you're Chris on an 0-2 pitch. Filling up the strike zone, 40 strikes out of 58 pitches. You got him with a with a slider if you want, or a changeup. One two. They go slider away, and again no swing. Two and two. Last night for the Giants, just their fourth loss this year when scoring five or more runs. They were 27 and 4, 27 and 3 prior to last night. 2 2, and there's the strikeout. Change up. Yep, he called it. Maxwell goes down, one out, and no advancement, obviously, for Crawford. And Chris speeds up his delivery when he comes set. Really, like a, almost a quick pitch. So it throws off the timing in two ways of the hitter. One, he thinks that the ball's going to get there sooner, and then you throw a changeup. That's why you got the, the bad swing from Justin Maxwell, turns it over. It's all about disrupting timing. It's an old trick of guys throwing out yes, of the stretch. Yes, indeed. You're like, wait a second, wait, when do I go back? Oh, too late. You're going back to the dugout. Gregor Blanco, an infield single. And he hit a little squibber up the third base line. Renato's on the grass there. Tulowitzki remains on the left side. And it's fouled off by Blanco. Casey McGee is on deck, good. Tiberius, the super utility guy for late in the game. This is a role Casey's been in since he came back from the minor leagues. One and one. Crawford elite double. He's at second. Rocky's got three in the first against Lincecum. And then a line drive knocked Lincecum out in the second inning. He was on the ropes anyhow. But he had already warmed up twice at that point. The line drive caught the forearm, we've been told, of Lincecum. He has a contusion on his forearm, and that's why he had to go. One and two. The Giants got all three of their runs in the bottom of the third. The Rockies had an error behind Russell on a ground ball to Willene Rosario that would have at least gotten one, if not two. And then there was a double play ground ball behind it. The Tulo bobbled for a moment. 
And so the Rockies could get just one. They would have in all likelihood turned it over against Matt Duffy because the throw did go on to first from DJ and it was fairly close. There's no question he, he beat it, but had there not been a slight bobble initially prior to the feed by Tulo, the Rockies would have gotten out of that despite the error by Rosario. So then that set outs. the stage for Posey to hit the double. You really gave him five outs. Five outs, yeah. If you think about the air and then the bobble where you wouldn't even have faced Posey. And this is a ground ball to Rosario. Two outs. Crawford goes to third. And with two outs, Bruce Bochy's going to go pitching instead of Offense, and he's going to send up Yusmero Petit and not Casey McGee. He's going to try to save his bullpen. With every challenge call, the Subaru Eyesight Review will determine the outcome. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. You don't want to relax here if you're Russin. Still a. Still has a bat in his hand. That's that. As Clint Hurdle used to say, it's a man with a bat in his hand. One and out. Oh. I'm sure Chris was looking over, saw Casey on the on deck circle. So once he got blocked, was there, okay, I got McGee. No, now they're going to put Petit up there. Petit's 0 for 8 this year, and he's about to be 0 for 9. So good job of pitching by Chris Russin. Crawford a leadoff double, and he is left at third base. We'll go to the fifth inning. The Rockies lead 5-3. Cap. Rockies got after Tim Lincecum in the first inning. DJ LeMayu would score on a Tulowitzki base hit. Nolan Arenado, 14 game hitting streak. He ripped the double to left. Nolan and Rosario and Troy, the RBIs in the third, and then the Rockies would score a couple last inning. Charlie Blackman had a sack fly. Chris Russin in RBI as well. So the Rockies up 5-3. to three. There's your first bank game recap. They'll have Cargo leading off in the fifth. Cargo fly ball to right. And a sharp ground ball to first. Five for five last night for Carlos Gonzalez. Outfield straight up. Infield basically straight up. But they're not playing the shift. On the outside corner, they go soft, and it's a strike. Might be one of the few teams that hasn't pulled the shift on Cargo. Last night they did, and he hit through it. Outside. One ball, one strike on Carlos. I'll tell you the most impressive swing last night for Cargo was 
the left on left swing against Javi Lopez in the 3 3 game. That double he drove to left to give the Rockies a 4 3 advantage. That was just the fourth hit given up all year by Javi Lopez to a left handed batter, and then Ben Paulson right behind him. I was going to say that. Then Benny comes up and drives in a run with the base hit to left field. Two RBIs on that from Paulson. One, two. The extra base hits are starting to pile up. Rockies have had the leadoff man on in two of the four innings. Margo trying to reach here against Petit in the fifth. And he has to reach for it. It's popped up left side. Duffy battling the sun makes the catch. One out. Now last night, the Rockies' middle of the order was outstanding. And all year, They've done a good job at AT&T Park. Arenado to the Whiskey Cargo. Combined 340 entering the game. Three home runs, nine RBIs. You can throw two more ribbies on there with what to the Whiskey and Arenado have done today. He said to Walt yesterday before the game, we chat with him and threw out that old hockey phrase about, you know, in big games, your best players have to be the best guys on the ice. Well, your best players hit in the middle of the order. Your, your best players offensively. They came through in a big way yesterday, and they've come through so far in this one. One out, and here's Nolan. Just put so much pressure on the opposing team when, when guys do that. I mean, you have your three, four, five hitters. I know as a defender, you're thinking, man, if we just get through these guys, then we'll have a chance down with the, the guys lower in the lineup. But when they... But when they do their thing, and then the, the other guys help out, chip in, that's when you score the eight or nine runs. And that's the number they hit last night, eight. On the ground, foul. So here's what Walt said about the middle of his order after last night's ball game. When we get all the guys in the middle doing their thing, it's it's a really good lineup. And uh, you know, to come in here and, and get 17 hits, it's really difficult to do. I mean, you guys have seen games here for years. It's that doesn't happen. So I'm really proud of the adjustments our offense has made um, and the way we're going right now. He didn't just it, make that catch, did he? He may have to take huh? a show. He may have to take that to Vegas. What? Kidding me? The glove made a wonderful it, it play. Did, cause it did, because his eyes didn't see it go in the glove. <laughs> no one's looking back. Everybody's looking at the big boy. But come on, really? I did. I'll just stick the glove behind my back. Oh, it's in there. It, you can fool the cameraman. I don't blame him. I'd have gone as, as if the ball was going into center field. Rosario pulls it down the left field line, and Willeen's going to have a two-out double. Stay hot, baby bull. That's nine hits in his last 14 at-bats. That's hot. Scorching hot. Little pitch for Willene. He hammers the fastball belt high inside. Running hard out of the box. Almost knocked down that wall on the on the ground. Going to miss for Mike McHenry. He had a double down the right field line. He's looking for a little two-out magic here to tack on. A five to three in the fifth.
Yep, no matter what position he is playing, Baby Bull can't flat rate. Same position in his first at bat, or his second at bat, excuse me, when he doubled the right field behind in the count. The Rockies are 26 for the last 54 with runners in scoring position. Making a top that runners in scoring position all year long. Got a hanger, and the Kennery just missed it. Throws his bat in disgust. He thought that one should have been in the seats. He just missed. That ball a long way. Rosario left at second, 5 3, Colorado. The news around baseball today is that Giancarlo Stan will be out for four to six weeks after he broke his hammock bone in last night's game against the Dodgers. He said he originally felt it against Brett Anderson, but then in facing Pedro Baez and swinging a miss in the bottom of the ninth, that was it for Stanton. Again, out four to six weeks. That means the home run leader, the RBI leader, will not be playing for the next month and a half. Troy Tulowitzki had the same injury in 2010, and here's his reaction. You can come back from it pretty quick. Um, I know they said four to six weeks for, for him. I think I was ready probably after the third week. Uh, but when I say ready, um, you could play, but you're not effective um, because, of, like you said, that power, it's still very weak. And uh, you know, if anybody can come back and be powerful, you would think it'd be him. But I, I would say um, you know, he's going to need that full time uh, to, get, to get right and get healthy. So again, Stanton putting up MVP caliber numbers so far this season. 27 home runs, 67 RBIs, but that'll mean good things for Nolan Arenado as he is right behind him in terms of RBIs and home runs also climbing the charts. Of course, Todd Frazier sitting in second with Bryce Harper at 24 apiece and then Nolan Arenado with 22 when it comes to guys hitting home runs in the National League. So exciting to see Nolan again up there with some of those names. Todd Frazier leading him in all-star voting right now. So just one more reason for fans to get out there and vote as if you need one more reason to go vote for Nolan Arenado. Now Nolan clearly ought to be an all-star. And when you talk about mid-season MVP candidates for the sake of that conversation, I would think Bryce Harper would be number one right now, 340, 24, and 58. He scored 53 runs. Paul Goldschmidt, certainly in that conversation, 352, 20, and 62. You know, Frazier has 293 average, 24, and 52. Nolan Arenado, 290, 22, and 64. So his numbers don't take a back seat to any of the guys producing 
MVP and, kind of season so far. And, and let's just say it again because you've already said it once, but we'll hear it. Oh, it's a Coors Field. At Coors Field this year, he's 287, nine home runs, 31 RBIs. Good numbers. Out on the road, coming into the game, 295, 13, and 33. We make it 34 now, RBIs. Away, away. So better numbers out on the road. I'm always happy when we when Well, we, we have to. Yep. We have to because people just disregard it. Hey, fans, the 11th Annual Faith Day at Coors Field this Sunday, July 26th with Michael W. Smith as this year's musical guest. Visit rockies.com slash faith day to purchase no, tickets. No scary, extra Jenny, is Jenny listening? Because that, that's, that's Gier, Gier Deli Chocolate. Chocolate. We forgot right. to go last night because the game went so long. But tonight we why, have to go. Why are you taking the cherries off? They just threw the cherries away on top of that Sunday. I do too. I don't like the cherries. Drew, no Drew, idea. Yes? don't use time as an excuse, please. You owe me Giardelli's, we'll and go, it's a tonight, day game, tonight. and you can clearly purchase that for me tonight. Absolutely. Or done. you can just hand me a 20 spot, and I swear I'll go get everybody some. <laughs> You're not going to get as much as you like if I just give you 20. Um, I, I get rid of the cherry too. Uh, no. You like those the, yeah, the whipped cream, cherry, the nuts, I like the, the whole nine cream. yards. I don't, yeah, the nuts are good. I don't. The cherry to me gets in the way. This ball's well hit to left center, and it is gone. Home run, Matt Duffy, his seventh of the year, and it's a one-run game. about some of the youngsters for the Giants. 36 RBI for Matt Duffy in seventh home run. Change up. And he stayed back on the 1-1 pitch. And then the high follow through. Just left of the 382 mark. So Duffy's driven in two, and Buster Posey at the plate has driven in two. Five, four Rockies, bottom of five, two outs. Uh -oh. One and one on Posey. Hit. Posey two hits. Anytime the Rockies got him today, he lined out to Tulowitzki. Gerald Dempsey the third. Gerald Dempsey Posey the third. Andrew Susak, a single and a line drive to center. So he's taking some good hacks against Russell today. Career 345 hitter against Colorado. See that? Prince Fielder. Joined, uh, that. Prince uh, joined his dad, Cecil, in the 300 home run club. Big daddy is... Prince's dad hit one of the longest home runs I've seen out at Tiger Stadium in left field. Not over the right field one with the shorter porch. Left field. Hit up on top and then climbed over Tiger Stadium. He was playing shortstop, but it was one of those old wow moments. Left the, left the building. And left the building. Bruno on CSAC. Eight hits now for the Giants. CSAC played collegiately at Oregon State. But he's from the area, he's from Sacramento.
popped up play though. Rosario raised his hand. He's got it in foul ground. In the inning, Matt Duffy, a solo home run to left. And the Rockies lead down to a single run. It's 5-4. The Rockies' top picks for the 2015 Major League Draft also spent some time in New Britain while he was on the East Coast. He files a report from the Rockies' new AA affiliate. So Spilly all the time on Rockies Real Time. That's after the postgame show this afternoon right here on Root Sports. Drew Goodman, Jeff Houston, and Jenny Kavnar. The Rockies in the sixth inning will have Brandon Barnes. Chris Russin on deck. Charlie Blackman after that. Barnes a couple of walks, a run scored this afternoon. That, that's the way to get to the park. They don't have a fire on board like our friends from last night. <laughs> had a little barbecue. Side corner for a strike. This will probably be the last inning for Petit. I mentioned it when he came in that his high this year in. in Innings was six, but pitches was 60. And we'll see what Bruce Bochy has in mind. Hey, come enjoy the best fireworks show in town on Friday, July 10th. It's courtesy of Coca-Cola and King Supers. Tickets are going quickly, so get yours today. Fireworks, Friday, July 10th. The Atlanta Braves are in town. First time we get a chance to see the Braves. Russell pops this one up. And Crawford really battling, and he makes the catch. Well, I don't, I, I say this, and I don't want to be in any way disrespectful to Tim Lincecum, who's had a marvelous career. Two time Cy Young award winner. He's won three rings. I have the utmost respect for him. But quite honestly, from a Rockies perspective, Petit right now is more of a challenge to hit than, than Lincecum has been of late and certainly was today. Well, let's have him gave up four hits in just an inning and two thirds. Since then, Petit's only given up three hits. He's done what he seems to always do. He's kept his team in the game, giving him a chance to get back involved, and they have. Two outs, nobody on. Here in the sixth inning, Charlie Blackman is one for two in a sack fly. He had a double in the second and then a sack fly and a line drive to fairly deep left field to score Brandon Barnes.
just couldn't pull the trigger on that swing. He flinched, he wanted to, it was a hanger up. Sometimes your mind says yes and your body says no. I can't do it, I can't swing. Talking to Charlie in the clubhouse today, when he first got to pro ball, and I'm sure everybody has this kind of moment. He was looking around, he was a second round pick and star at Georgia Tech. And he said, I feel like I'm the worst guy on the field. <laughs> Happens to us all. I should say most of us. Maybe not all. Maybe some of those other guys, like, like Ken Griffey Jr. Probably never felt that way, did Never he? felt that way. But other guys, yes. You look out, you say, well, this guy can do this, and this guy can do that. What can I do? Yeah, he could do plenty, and he's made himself a very, very solid big league player. This is Chick center field, and Pagan makes the catch. It's a 1 2 3 inning. Just the second of the game for the Rockies. 5 4, Colorado leads, middle of six. Lexus dealer top of the first the Rockies got the jump on the Giants and Lincecum scoring three times to Lewinsky an RBI hit Arenado an RBI double and Rosario stroke the base hit up the middle and Chris Russin has been very good on both ends of the baseball as he had a slug bunt for an RBI single the Giants countered with three in one inning but they were aided by Four Rockies defense, and then Duffy a solo home run. So Chris Russell's actually pitched a little bit better than the four runs he's allowed. It's 5 4 as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning, and Russell will face Crawford, Maxwell, and Blanco, two of the three lefties. Crawford a double off the wall his last time up, and DJ will get him here. I like that one pitch, one out. Cued off the end of the bat, DJ had to come around and circle and you know, make the play. Looking down at the Giants, you mentioned Petit probably done after last half inning. George Contos is still up and throwing in their bullpen. Number 70, George Contos. Justin Maxwell has struck out twice against Chris Russell. Crowd reacting overhead. Military choppers. And Maxwell a base hit to right.
Yeah, <laughs> Dougie has a busy night tonight and tomorrow night. The Grateful Dead are playing oh, Santa in Santa Clara. Clara down at Levi Stadium. Doug doesn't miss many dead shows, so he was hoping that some of America's <laughs> finest would give him a ride in the chopper. Those choppers were for him. I think not, Doug. They're not going on taxpayer dollars. Gregor Blanco at the plate. Outside, ball one. Joaquin Arias is on deck. How useful is Doug going to be tomorrow? The oh, question. well, I didn't even... It wasn't even going to go there. Wasn't going to bring it well, up. He's actually looking at me, shaking his head as if to say <laughs> like worthless. No. Today's hit. Now with the Giants going to their bench here in the top of the order next. See if Walt will get some action going in the bullpen. And as I say that, you see some guys leaving the top step of the dugout and running down. Bettencourt. Yep, Rafi, who was so good last night in a 1 2 3 inning. And they changed who was going to hit. Originally, it was Joaquin Arias, and now it's Casey McGee. And there's a risk to this in that Arias runs much better than McGee. You get a ground ball here, you get out of it. Obviously, McGee's got pop. And that brings Steve Foster out to the mound. This helps Raffy down in the bullpen. Rocky's upcoming home schedule is brought to you by Remax. Rockies won't be at home for a while, but when they do return to Denver, they'll see the Angels again. Rockies played two close games, unfortunately, both losses in Anaheim earlier this year. And then the Braves will be in for a four-game set. It'll lead us up to the All-Star break. It'll lead us uh, right up to the All-Star break, yep. Yeah. Casey McGee is a good guy to have if you're a Rockies fan. If he hits the ball on the ground, it's going to be a double play. He's second in the National League in grounding out in the most double plays with 14. And Simmons with the break has more, and that's just one more. But more at bats because, remember, Casey's been down in the minor leagues for a few weeks when he was designated for assignment by the Giants. Maxwell at second, Blanco at first, one out. Rockies up 5-4 in the sixth. Ten hits now for San Francisco. On the corner of strike. This should be two. There's one, and there's two. Another double play ground ball off the bat of Casey McGee. That was the danger for Bruce Bochy when he selected McGee over Arias. It worked out for Colorado. They lead by one.
Lewitsky, Carlos Gonzalez, and they'll see a new arm here in the seventh inning. Rockies up five to four, and George Contos is now on the hill for the Giants. A lot of innings for Contos, 37, six months among National League relievers. 170 ERA. Nobody's hitting him. Lefty just a buck 25. Righty's somewhat better, but you don't go and brag on a 217 average typically. What are we waiting on? The boat to pass by. <laughs> Another bad bag out at second. Loose. Do you ever remember a game in the backyard being stopped because second base was loose? No, you just had to move it back into position because yeah. once you slid, it went five feet, which is a piece of cardboard. Nice job. Okay. Why did they start adding the emblem? I mean, sometimes the, you know, it's the Fourth of July. There may be a. You know, American flag on it. Sometimes there's a different message. I think I think with Helton and Helton, Helton, they had seven, yeah, they, they had the number. And they have world champions, appropriately enough, for the Giants. I mean, when did they start doing that on the back? I don't know, but somebody earlier this year for their opening day, they had the, the, the right team name but the wrong emblem. So they had to peel them off. Really? And reattach some other ones. That's not good. That's a fashion faux pas, it's right? Not, it's not real good. How, how do you do that? You know, I was just talking to somebody with the Rockies ground crew about that on the last homestand. You know, how many bags do you go through? And they ordered two or three sets. DJ with a base hit to right. He's hit the ball hard in the first two games that. and, and had nothing to show for it. Yeah, he needed that hit. So the leadoff man aboard here in the seventh for Tulowitzki. And how many times do you talk about a guy hitting over 300 that needs a hit? But DJ should have had two already because of that one he hit off a of lens to come back up the middle. That should have been a base hit with two RBIs. Hit a line drive to right field. And now finally, inside out swing. Patented DJ swing. Take it to right for a base hit. To Lewitsky, a single and an RBI in the first. Ground out and a foul out down the left field line since. DJ always a threat to run. With that, Troy squared around just to get some movement from Matt Duffy. Pitch was outside 1-0. Oh. And Matt will start even with the bag. And I'm sure he'll move back as the pitcher starts to get set. Well, Troy's not going to try to bunt again. There he goes. He's starting even and off camera. He's backing up. Jeff, it's as if you've played the position a before. A couple times over a third. <laughs> Just a few. Because you want to, if the hitter's looking out of the corner of your eye, he wants, you want him to see you there. Okay, now I'll start to back up. I would think the key is you want to make sure you stop backing up with the, by the time the ball's <laughs> You headed toward the plate because <laughs> you, you, it's a big good field that you want to be moving forward, right. not the other way. <laughs> not going back towards right. the grass. There's a few guys that I wanted to do that when they're up at the plate. Dave Winfield in particular. Yeah, if, you, if you were Winnie? playing third with yeah, Stanton with, right now, right. right? With Stanton right now. I'll go ahead and back up on the grass. Low on too low. It's 2-0. Oh. Troy's always performed well against the Giants, his hometown team. 11 game hitting streak. Now, the way this giant offense has been so pesky, we got to keep adding on. Three in the first, two in the fourth for the Rockies. And the one thing that we've seen from the Giants over the years is they're... It doesn't bother them to play in one-run games. They're, they're used to it. They, this is really their M.O. 
Yeah, I, I think they're more comfortable than any team in baseball playing one run games. Typically it's 2 1 3 2 here. DJ has stolen base in the first, his 10th of the year. Playing the Rockies by month. In April, they stole six bases. May, they stole 14 bases. June, they stole 22 bases. So they, they picked that up. And most of that has been Blackman and LeMay here. Get out of play. Get out. Cusack didn't see it till late. He still makes the catch. That would have been an easier play for Contos, the pitcher, because Susak didn't see it, and, he, and then he also is battling with the on-deck circle with the weighted bats, the pine star rag, the stick, everything. As he comes over, he's lucky he didn't step on that because I've seen catchers step on it and just slip right onto their backside. The car goes 0 for 3. DJ still at first base, one out. That's why you don't, the, the hitters don't stand on that. They always stand off to the side in the dirt. If DJ looks to run early here. Not going. And it's a ball. Almost half of the Giants games to a point, 36 out of 75, have been decided by one or two runs. Former catcher himself, Bruce calling the plays and what, what he wants on the pickoff. One and one. Rockies have picked it up offensively. Rafael's gone back to the bullpen to get loose. He had sat down at the start of this inning, but that's because he was already loose from the previous half inning. He knows exactly how many pitches, how much time he needs. Been doing it a long time. Vargas spits on that off-speed pitch, two and one. Those are pitches, especially early in the year, he yes. was flailing at. Just, just wailing, coming off balance. Pulling his head. Good time to hit one a mile. Mayu takes off and it's a ground ball to second. Two outs. As Nolan comes to the plate, this will give us a good chance to talk about the All Star voting because it ends July 2nd. So be sure to vote for your Rockies All Stars. This guy deserves to be there. Vote 35 times on the 2015 Insurance MLB All Star Game ballot exclusively at Rockies.com. And don't miss the 86th annual All Star Game on July 14th. Coverage starts at 5 p.m. Mountain Time on Fox. Vote early and often. Yeah, and DJ, vote for him as well. Arenado, an RBI double in the first. And he hit a smash back up. Well, would have been back up the middle for a base hit, but Petit put his glove behind his back, and somehow the ball ended up in his glove. Nolan... One for three. The hit here would be large to score LeMahieu, get the Rockies a two-run cushion again. Why not make it a big fly? Okay. Okay? I have, I no, mean, I have no issues with that. If he can hit two at night, he can hit one during the day. You would think. This is up the middle. Kanto grabs with his bare hand, and... 
reached over did Buster Posey to apply the tag on Arenado. Otherwise, he would have been safe. That'll end the inning. Middle of seven, the Rockies leading the Giants 5-4. Goes six innings, allows four runs, just one of which was earned. Scattered ten hits. Solid outing by Chris. That double play ground ball with an even one there. So Russin on the plus side is still in there. Angel Pagan at the plate. Joe Panic after that. I think. Well, I was just looking Beyond at the Beyond that, then you'll probably see Rafael. I was just looking at the numbers for Pagan against Rafi. He's four for eight with a home run. So that's could be part of the thinking of why Walt wanted Chris out there. The second thing is he's just at 91 pitches. Well, Pagan's one for three and Panic's 0 for three. Two and one. And other than the third inning when he threw 23 pitches, everything else has been you know, 17, 12, 15, 15, to seven last inning. Three and one. If he reaches, I think he'd go get him because you wouldn't want him to be on the hook for a loss. Well, he just did reach. Well, I think you almost have to keep the strategy going. He's gotten panicked twice or three times. And to me, I understand the individual side of it. But it's about winning baseball games, and if you think he's the better guy to get panic than a sure. right-hander coming in, you got to continue to go with it. You know, that's the thing. We will we'll get emails and texts about, oh, Walt, did, you know, why didn't he make this move or do that? We sometimes don't have all the information. We don't know who's available. Yeah, we get a lot of it, but we don't get all of it. And sometimes things change in game. Right. I mean, last night, I, I know part of that's a reference to last night. People say, why is Canely still out there? Well, the only guy left that was available 
was Friedrich. And you say, well, they're, they're professional athletes. They all should be available. They're getting paid a lot of money. If, if your body is in a position where you are going to risk injury, it's done everywhere in baseball, you don't just strut a guy out that's got that's arms already hurting. You can't do that. You can't do that to the human body. One and one on panic. That's why men just get second guess so much. It's uh, well, why'd you leave men so long? And then if you take him out, why'd you take him out so soon? I mean, it's that's it's a question that's been asked for ages. First walk allowed today by Chris Russett. First walk in his last couple of starts. Yes, he went. went. One and two. Late action on the slider. I like to go back out again to the same area. Ground ball not hit hard. Throw to first, throw to second on the first. Not in time. Good job backing up by Mike McHenry. So Panic switches places with Pagan. And with Matt Duffy coming up, you would assume that Walt would make the move here if he's going to go to Betancourt. He might get a, a, a double switch. Just go straight up. Yeah, I was yeah, just I looking at. I don't know why it no, would be I necessary. Would, no, I forgot Nolan made the last out. If it was Willene, you would make the double switch and go for defense. So Chris Russin goes six and a third. He leaves on the plus side. And he'll give way to Rafael Betancourt when we come back. The day after every Rockies victory, get 50% off your online order at Papa John's. Promo code ROCKSWIN at PapaJohns.com. With one out in the seventh inning, Matt Duffy coming up. Chris Russin now becomes spectator. Rafael Betancourt through the seventh inning last night. He was a 1-2-3 seventh inning in his return after coming off the disabled list with vertigo. A couple of punch-outs in the process. 
It's like he had never left. He'd come back, and this is the Rafi that we had seen early in the season. There's 15 pitches, 10 for strikes. Well, one thing that makes a manager feel good is that when you put a reliever in the game like a Rafi, this ball's in the air to cargo and right. Long run near the stands, and he has to bail. He said if he gets beat, they're going to have to earn it. He's not going to put people on. No, and that's what tells you when, right before he went on the DL that he wasn't right because he was walking some guys, and he was all over the strike zone. And it wasn't until after it has been a couple days he, I was talking to him. He said, I just didn't feel right. I felt like I was in a fog out there. And it just wasn't myself, and I was hurting the team. I remember it was a couple weeks. It was about a week before that. And Rafi was batting on a really bad some sort of cold. So the Rockies' bullpen has been busy. You don't typically see this where your closer has thrown the second most pitches in the last uh, week, but that's been the case with John Axford, Tommy Canley, because of last night has thrown the most. Canley, you would imagine, is down. Axford's back in play today. One and two on Duffy. Posey again on deck. Bill Logan, who threw a third of an inning last night, is now getting ready, and that would be... That would be for Crawford. Crawford. Yep. One and two on Duffy, who homered in his last at bat. The Giants this year when trailing after six are one and twenty-eight. Rafi's hoping to extend that. That one and twenty-eight is among the worst marks in the National League. The lowest percentages. Marlins one and thirty-four. The Giants, the Nationals. That's surprising. Pirates and the Rockies. You know, for as many it. bats as the Rockies have in their lineup, to produce only two late-inning comebacks is a surprise. And the Nationals are the only team leading their division, two and a half game lead over the Mets. Two two to right and it's fair into that corner. Panic will get a stop side from Roberto Kelly at second and third with one out and Buster Posey coming up. Now the question will become: Do you pass on Posey, load up the bases, and try to get a ground ball? And you have a force all the way around with Susat. Went away, but it was up and away. Very nicely played and right by Cargo to get the ball back in to keep Panic from scoring. How would you play it? 
I'd put him on. That's what I would yeah, do. I don't, I don't mess with it. I'll pitch the Susack and not Posey any day of the week. Yeah. Again, it's a familiar refrain in sports, especially in baseball. Don't let the best player on the other team beat you. You get beat, let somebody else do it. Posey, three for eight. Lifetime against Raphael. Plus, again, this sets up the opportunity to get two outs with one swing with Susak. a party on the rooftop you can do that ask about our Tuwaka Terrace deck pregame picnic area Tuwaka Terrace loft or Shane Cobana party areas call today bases are full of giants panic Duffy who just doubled and then the walk to Posey Andrew Susak a single a line out and he found out his last time up He's clinging to a 5-4 lead. This is where it helps to have a veteran on the mound like Rafael. He's been in this situation many, many times. Still not a missed. Now uh, this is what the run expectancy is in the base with the bases loaded in Major League Baseball with one out, 69 plus percent of the time, we're going to score. Going to buck those odds right now. Rafael Betancourt, 1-1. One, one. Ground ball down the line, fair ball, and that's going to put the Giants in front. In fact, a green light for the trail runner Posey. He's going to score. Bases clearing, double Andrew Susak. 7-5 San Francisco. One of those runs will be charged to Chris, the other two to Rafi. Look where Michael sets up and where the ball ends up. Open the hips, pull the bat through. Nolan's playing off the line because of where they're trying to pitch it. When you miss your spot, they're going to do that, and that's what Susan did. He just pulled the ball for a double, his sixth double of the season. Still just one out. Pagan walked leading off the inning against Russ in panic, reached on a fielder's choice, then a double by Duffy, the walk to Posey, and then the Susack double. And the Rockies are going to set up another force all the way around by walking Crawford. Jason was 
They faced Raphael one at a time, 0 for 1. Fly ball to Barnes and left. And that's the second out. That'll bring up Gregor Blanco, and Wall will have Boone Logan face Blanco. AT&T and a Coors Field type of summer game is broken out. 7-5 San Francisco now in the seven. Afternoon matchup, Kyle Kendrick for the Rockies against last year's World Series MVP Madison Bumgardner, who is 7-4 this year with a 3-0-4 ERA, the ace of the Giants staff. Rockies now trail 7-5, three runs in the inning for the Giants, seven runs, 12 hits for San Francisco. Susak at second, he doubled in all three runs. Brandon Crawford is at first with two gone. Gregor Blanco against Boone Logan. He's trying to make it five of nine. That's not what you want as a reliever because you take pride in making sure that your buddy's runs don't score. Ball and a strike. The Rockies in the eighth inning will have Rosario McHenry and Barnes. Sergio Romo warming up. Good pitch. Slider for a strike. Another slider, and it's a ground ball to first. Willeen's got it. That'll end the inning. But the Giants come from a 5-4 deficit, and they'll jog out onto the field with a 7-5 advantage as we go to the eighth.
brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by Mike Shaw, Subaru, always our lowest price in sales and service guaranteed. Cable car ride down Powell. 7-5 San Francisco leading the Rockies. Ben Paulson will pinch hit again uh, for Willene Rosario against Sergio Romo. No surprise there. Lefties are hitting over 400 against Romo. 407 to be exact. Righties 182. And Willene's one for 10 career against Romo. Well, you know what you're going to get with Romo. Slider. Slider. And then one fastball and two more sliders. That's about right. Ball, one strike. Romo's been touched a little bit lately. He's given up six runs in his last eight and two thirds. You think back to last year, the Rockies are the ones that knocked him out of the closers' role. Yes, they did during that series here in June. This ball's going to end up in the drink, I think. But foul. Almost hit the boat. There it is. That does not, unfortunately, count as a splash hit. No. Fastball. Two and two. Here's the one. One fastball, then it's sliders. Oh, they're going to try and trick him, come inside with the fastball. Didn't work for show. He didn't, didn't have the conviction. bat and fly ball to Blanco one out. McHenry doubled in the fourth, one for three. McHenry had 20 hits this year, 11 are extra base hits. Christian Friedrich throwing. things in this game that if the Rockies do not come back you're going to reflect upon the five out inning on defense and then just little plays that San Francisco made the Kenner's got the stabbing of the what would have been an RBI ground ball on the backhand by the line drive by DJ yeah, the line the drive by DJ that Exactly. The, both of those were against Petit. Yeah, but all three runs that the, the Giants scored in the third were unearned. But that also plays later on because how does the game shape up lineup watch? Sure. People forget about that. It says, okay, well, you gave up the three runs, but your, your lineup is different. 
in the fifth, sixth, seventh because of what happened in the third. Rafael Noah is on deck if Barnes can reach. Javi Lopez in a semi sprint to the giant bullpen. The only lefty they have down there now with the injury to Jeremy Affel. That's for Bruce Bochy saying that's for Black. Yeah, Charlie comes up. It doesn't matter with Ravi being the switch hitter. Two and two. Santiago Casilla, the closer for the Giants, to start his preparations. ERA against the Rockies. Closing in on seven years of Major League Service time. Three and two on Barnes. He's had a good eye all day. He's walked twice. 0 for 1. And Barnes will go to first. So Noah now will hit. Three walks this afternoon for Brandon Barnes. Well, the eight for 28 pinch hitting. That's a 286 average, three RBIs, four doubles. And hitting left handed, four for 19. Strike count on Raphael. Slider from Romo. The disappearing slider. That's pinpoint control where you want to throw it to a left hander. And he went back to it. It's 0 and 2. Rick's inviting so hard to hit. Even when you're sitting on the slide, I think I can I can get this. Fouled off as Barnes took off on the pitch.
being a former closer and Sergio and now pitching in the eighth inning. I'm not too concerned with base runners. He's not going to slide step. Do the things that other relievers would do. So that's how you can you can take off and run. That's just a courtesy throw over. I still look to take the base if I'm Brandon. thought he swung but he didn't come close that's one of the reasons it's fun to be here even as a road team they hang on every pitch that's the right call Up to the left side, Duffy's going to grab it. The Rockies are done at the top of the eighth. Barnes left on seven five, San Francisco. To by T-Mobile, the game changer occurred last inning when Andrew Susak with the bases loaded ripped a ground ball right down the third base line that would score every occupant of a base. And the Giants went from a 5-4 deficit to a 7-5 lead. That's our T-Mobile game changer. Joaquin Arias in the eighth inning is going to pinch hit for Romo to lead things off 9-1-2 and two for the Giants. And the Rockies have Christian Friedrich on the mound. Staying in and playing first base, Ben Paulson, who hit for Rosario. The last time Christian pitched was a few days ago against Arizona back on the 21st, or 24th, excuse me, just a third of an inning. He was up a, two or three different times last night in Really, the last man standing down in the bullpen. Uh, Walt stayed with Tommy. Thought Tommy could get the outs, and he did. Rockies took a 3-0 lead in the top of the first inning today. With a 
shoddy inning defensively. The Giants caught the Rockies after three. 3-3, three, three. but then the Rockies at the top of the fourth threw, threw two more out there, and they had a 5-3 lead. So they've had two multi-run leads in this game, but now they find themselves down late 7-5. They will at the top of the order in the ninth. Be facing Santiago Casilla at the closer now for the Giants. Well, he's a good closer, very good closer. He's not unhittable, though. No. Lefty's hitting above 300, in fact, against Santiago Casilla. First things first, though, Friedrich's got to get three outs. tip held so Arias strikes out to begin the bottom of the eighth inning and that'll bring up Angel Pagan Breaking ball for a strike on Pagan. One for three and a walk. He has scored a run. Much better right-handed than he does left-handed. And one hop to DJ. Two outs. And that'll bring up Joe Panic. Ball one strike. Good slider for very good. A wave for the bat by Panic one and two. Those are the ones you, you really extend the, the arm and the wrist. I can go right back to it. You say go right back to it. Yep. When you were in the batter's box, you said, I know it's coming again. Yeah, but can I hit it? That's the, the question. Sometimes you overthink it as a pitcher. And well, if he saw it, he'll, he'll make the adjustment. Well, maybe not. If you throw a better pitch and then you come back with the fastball, you're going to pop up into the inning and let your offense do the work. So we'll go to the ninth inning. Charlie Blackman to lead it off. The Rockies down by two runs.
Yankees had a rally here in the ninth against Santiago Casilla. They have the top of the lineup up. And the Rockies know this. They've had success against Casilla. They have scored in three of their last six encounters with the Giants' closer. And he knows that, too. 19 for 22 in save opportunities. That misses. Charlie. Today a double in the second inning. A sack fly in the fourth. One for three. Santiago has a fastball. 94, 96 miles an hour. Curveball and slider. And it's 2-0. and oh. Three and oh. I like the fake bunt. Kind of show them that I'm not swinging. I'll stick the bat out there. Charlie was taking the whole way. Well, he'll obviously be taken here. And that's a strike three and one. He might even take one more. Ball four. So the Rockies get the leadoff man on and therefore bring the tying run to the plate in D.J. LeMayhew. That's what a leadoff guy does in the last inning when you're down by two. We'll bring that tying run to the plate. LeMayhew rifled a single to right his last time up. One for three and a walk this afternoon for LeMayhew. Tulo's on deck. Cargo beyond him. Then Arenado. Bit of history between these two. Two for seven for DJ and Santiago. Who wants tacos? Fans follow at Root Sports underscore RM on Twitter to receive alerts for the Rockies taco special and the Rockies score more than seven in a game. For, for Charlie and DJ, they were going up. Take it until you got a strike. Off the plate, two balls and a strike. Shame because DJ shame. was trying to hold up. That was ball three. Trying to hold up. The ball really just finds the bat more than DJ committing too much. Runner going, and the throw by Susak's not going to get DJ. His second stolen base of the day, 11th of the season. Or Charlie, I should say. Let me correct that. 21st of the year for Blackman. Well, being down by two, you better be sure you're going to get in. And Charlie got in just in front of the tag of Brandon Crawford. He's so consistent with his jumps. 
Well, he gets the same lead every time. That's why he's consistent with the jumps. So it's three and two on LeMay here. Nobody out here at the top of the ninth. Seven five San Francisco. One out, and that'll bring up Troy. As I said a moment ago, I think the first two guys were taken until they got a strike. I don't think Troy will do that. If he gets a pitch, go ahead, go to swinging and hit it out. Yeah, nor should he. Right. Because yeah, he's in a different spot than those guys were. Oberg and Axford. Scott's been up for four or five minutes. John's just getting getting going. And that's that's if the Rockies, Rockies obviously take the lead. Take the lead. So Casilla has not been sharp. 13 pitches, only four strikes. And one of those was that check swing by DJ. Back to see it has so three curveballs. And again, nothing straight. He might not give him anything straight this whole at bat. Well, we talked about it when Buster Posey was up. That you're not going to allow Posey to beat you. Well, in Casillas' mind, he obviously can't put on the tying run. But he's going to do everything in his power not to let Tulowitzki have something he can drive. Four straight off speed pitches. It's two and two. And the slider misses three and two. It's hard to, to sit, break in pitch. When the guy has a 95 mile an hour fastball. But if there's any time to do it, this would this would be it. It I, takes guts. It would take the guts of a burglar yes, right now. Would. If you get the express, you got no shot. You, you don't, but he's on five straight off speed pitches. Sometimes when a guy's not convicted with uh -huh. What they settled on, you step off the back. Maybe Casilla was doing that right there. Three and two. And it's a liner to short. Two outs. It was a slider. Yep. And Troy was out front just a smidgen. So with two gone, Cargo steps up 0 for 4 this afternoon after the 5 for 5 last night.
Cargo against Casilla, two for six lifetime. You've got to pitch out over the plate a fastball. And that's why Susag's running out to the mound saying, hey, put it there again, he's not going to miss the next one. Those are the kind of balls that when Cargo's on time, he can drive out to left center. And the outfielders for the Giants are, are playing just straight up. Panic on the outfield grass, about 20 feet. Posey's on the line at first. And he's playing no doubles. Is Buster Posey. Fastball's <laughs> low, two and one. Nolan on deck, hoping for an opportunity. To see a throw. Does he throw him a fastball or a slider? Back up the middle, but Crawford's right there. Throw to first, and the ball game is over. The Rockies fall seven to five. They blow two significant leads a three nothing lead early, and then a five three lead in the middle innings. And their four game winning streak in San Francisco is over. They suffered their first loss at AT&T this year. George Contos gets the victory in relief. He's 2-0. Rafael Betancourt takes the loss. He's 2-3. And, and Santiago Casilla with his 20th save of the year. Once again, the Giants win it 7-5. Well, tough one for the Rockies to swallow. Looked like they were in position on several occasions to take this one the distance and come away with another victory it was not to be 7-5 the final let's get you to the Toyota post game show headed up by Mark Stout Mark all yours